Hi, welcome to the Microjig Shop. My name is Morgan, and today I'm going to show you how I made this kind of retro style Bluetooth speaker using the stereo wireless speaker kit from Rockler. If you're a fan of music, this is a really fun, low investment project to do. And if you're not a fan of music, something wrong with you. I don't, I don't know how to help you. I started by designing a 3D model of the speaker enclosure based on an earlier version I built a few years ago, but modified it to meet Rockler's specifications outlined in the instructions included with the speaker kit. I took a field trip to Rockler to buy the speaker kit and to pick up some wood while I was there. Keeping the design of the project is important in material selection. One face of this board has a nice contrast of sapwood, which I think will look really cool because you'll see that contrast in the box joints at each corner. Booyah! As with any project, the first step is milling down your lumber to rough length, flattening, and normalizing the thickness. I measured out the two sides of the enclosure and added an inch so that I could mill everything down in fewer pieces before cutting each part to final dimension. The left and right sides are 8 inches long, and the top and bottom are each 12 inches long. I'll cut everything to the 6 inch depth on the table saw later on. So I flattened and edge jointed my parts on the joiner, and I planed everything down to uniform thickness. I didn't go all the way down 3 quarters of an inch because I know that I'll likely need to mill the stock a second time after it's had a few days to settle in. Anytime you cut wood, you're releasing internal stress, and the wood will often twist or bow or cup over time, and you won't see it immediately. That's why after milling these main parts, I stickered them on a flat surface and left them over the weekend to acclimate to the shop. Then I came back, reflattened, and planed them down to final thickness. Then I brought the parts over to the table saw to rip them to final width. I wanted this cathedral grain pattern to be centered, so I removed more from one side to achieve that look. Once everything was cut to width, I got out my crosscut sled to cut my parts to length, starting with the 8 inch long left and right sides. I'm measuring directly from the keeper side of the kerf cut into my crosscut sled to set up my stop. As always, you want to make sure that your blade is 90 degrees to both the fence and the sled surface. This sled uses Microjig's zero play miter bars, which eliminates any side to side play as it moves along the miter slots, giving me super accurate cuts every time. Since we left a little extra room when cutting these parts to rough length on the miter saw, I'm going to go ahead and square up one end. From there, it's as easy as cutting your first side, moving the off cut over, then cutting the second side. Repeat the process for the top and bottom parts. Next, we're going to make us a little box joint jig. If you already have a box joint jig you like, feel free to skip ahead to the next step. Cut a piece of 3 quarter inch thick plywood to 6 inches wide and roughly the length of your sled fence, give or take a few inches. Over on the router table, we're going to install a quarter inch diameter straight or spiral router bit to cut some relief grooves at 11 30 seconds of an inch deep. This will make it much easier to route your dovetail tracks. I'm using Microjig's quarter inch relief bit, but any quarter inch diameter bit will do. Set your router table fence to 4 inches and route your relief groove. Flip around and route another relief groove on the other side. Next, swap out the quarter inch bit for half inch, 14 degree dovetail router bit, then set it to 3 8 cutting depth, and route dovetail tracks in the same locations, four inches in from each end. Bring it back over to the table saw and clamp it to the inside edge of your sled's fence. Install a dado blade set in your table saw, set up to cut 3 8 of an inch wide kerf. Raise your blade up to 3 8 of an inch above the surface of the sled and advance the sled until the blade cuts all the way through the box joint jig. To set up your spacing, you'll need to cut three small scrap pieces down to the exact width of your dado kerf. They should fit snugly, but not be too difficult to fit. Loosen the clamps and remove the fence. Insert the 3 8 by 3 8 of an inch piece into the dado kerf you just cut into the front face of the jig. Just make sure it's not sticking out at the back. Next, put the jig back on the sled up against the fence and insert the two inch wide piece into the dado curve cut into the sled and bump it up to the uncut part of the jig with a half inch sticking up above the surface of the sled. Now place the one and a half inch wide piece as a spacer between the dado key in the jig and the kerf alignment key in the sled. Slide the jig up to the kerf alignment key until all three parts are touching, then tighten the clamps. It's a good idea to test the spacing with some scrap wood before cutting your actual parts for the project. Doesn't have to be big, just make sure your spacing's right. And if you're happy with the results of your test cuts, we can move on to cutting our walnut parts. Raise your dado blade up to match the thickness of your material, which should be 3 quarters of an inch or close to it. Decide which edge of each of your parts you want to be the front and back. So when you cut your box joints to keep everything symmetrical, both sides of each part need to be cut the exact same way. I started with the front edge up against the dado key, then moved through the rest of the cuts, registering from the key for each subsequent cut. Once you start cutting the top and bottom parts, Use one of the side pieces as a spacer for the first cut. 
Place the first mortise cut on one of the side parts over the dado key. Bump the front edge of the top or bottom piece against the front edge of the side piece on the jig. Then continue through the cuts as usual. Now that all of our box joints are cut, let's dry fit them to make sure everything fits nicely before gluing it up. Perfect. That's what you're looking for right there. Alright, now we're ready to glue it up. Apply some wood glue to the inside of the joints on each part and clamp it together. Your box joints should keep everything reasonably square when it's all clamped together, but it's always a good idea to check and make sure that your parts are all 90 degrees to each other. Now just give the glue some time to dry. I don't know, take a break. Go have a snack. Once dry, unclamp the assembly, clean up any squeeze out, and sand your joints smooth. Now let's cut the three parts that fit inside of the enclosure. The front grille, the baffle board, and the rear panel. All three will be the same size. I prefer to mark my cuts rather than simply measuring. I do that by aligning the inside corner of the enclosure with the corner of the stock and marking both sides of the opposite corner. Rip the parts to width on the table saw, test fitting as you go. Then cut each part to length. This can be done on a miter saw, but I prefer to use my table saw sled because it has a stop to ensure that each cut is uniform. To route the slots on the front grill, all we need are three reference points. You'll see why in a minute. We're going to drill half inch diameter holes at one end of the center slot, second slot, and outer slot. Alright, now we have three reference holes to set up the router table. Install a half inch diameter straight or spiral bit and raise it up so that the reference hole for the center slot sits snugly around the shank of the bit. Bump the fence up to the long edge of the workpiece and lock it in place. Next, clamp a stop to the fence touching the rear edge of the workpiece. Then flip the part around to face the other direction and clamp another stop to the fence touching the front edge of the workpiece. These will be your start and end points at the center slot. Lower the bit down to cut only about an eighth of an inch deep. Turn the router on and lower the workpiece down onto the rotating bit with the rear edge touching the stop. Advance the workpiece until it reaches the other stop. Flip the part over long ways and route the other side using the same method. Raise the bit by another eighth of an inch and repeat. Keep doing that until the center slot is cut all the way through. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second slot. Reset the fence, reposition the stops, and this time after routing both faces, flip the workpiece over to route the second slot on the other side of the center slot. Then repeat the process for the outer slots. Next we can drill the holes for our speakers in the baffle board. Rockler's instructions call for two three quarters of an inch diameter holes. The holes are centered vertically and two and five eighths in from the edge on center. We don't want the speakers sticking out of the front of the baffle board because we'll be applying some grill cloth and the front grill needs to sit flat up against that. So I'm using a quarter inch rabbit bit cutting an eighth of an inch deep. Now we need to drill a hole in the rear panel to install the control pod. The easiest way to find the center is to just set a straight edge running from one corner to the other and draw a line. Then set it down running between the other two corners and draw another line. Where those two lines intersect, that's your center point. Now just drill the holes centered on that intersection. Going back to the front grill, I'm going to cut a 60 degree bevel on all four sides. Table saws don't tilt all the way to 60 degrees, so we'll tilt the blade to 30 degrees and run the part on its edge. I don't recommend making this cut with a fence alone. At the very least, use a tall fence to support the whole surface. Even better, use some kind of vertical tenon jig that either runs along the fence or in the miter slot. I'm going to add a 1 8 inch round over to the slots on the front grill. Not much to explain there other than don't try to lower the workpiece down onto the bit while the router is running. Instead, position the workpiece over the bit, making sure that the cutting edge isn't contacting the material. Hold it in place with a push block, then turn on the router. Now I'm just going to add a 45 degree chamfer to all the inside and outside edges of the main enclosure. You can go as shallow or as deep as you want, but I'm going with about an eighth inch chamfer. It doesn't have to be exact, I'm just going by sight, setting the depth to where I think it looks good. Finally, we can start assembling this thing. I cut four three quarter by three quarter inch strips of MDF to use as my internal braces, which will be used to secure the front grille, baffle board, and rear panel in place. On a flat surface, put the front grille face down and slide the enclosure over it, making sure the front edge sits flat on the work surface. Put whatever grill cloth you're going to use down and then the baffle board on top of that. Apply some super glue to the strip, then press it firmly against the inside of the enclosure and the back of the baffle board. But make sure you're gluing it to the enclosure, not the baffle board. Do this for the top and bottom, then remove the front grill, baffle board, and grill cloth. Do the same thing for the rear panel, one strip at the top, one strip at the bottom. I went ahead and spray painted my baffle board black so that there'd be no contrast between the MDF and the speakers visible through the grill cloth. Install the speakers in the baffle board, then staple on some grill cloth. It doesn't necessarily have to be grill cloth specifically designed for audio applications. You can pretty much use whatever type of fabric floats your boat. 
And finally, we can put this thing together. I'm drilling some quarter inch diameter holes in the rear internal strips. These are just access holes so I can more easily secure the front grille and baffle board in place. Using one and a half inch long wood screws, screw the baffle board and front grille to the internal braces from behind. Feed the speaker wires through the hole cut for the control pod in the rear panel. Now just reattach the speakers and insert the control pod into the hole in the rear panel. I know next to nothing about electronics, but that's okay. Rockler made it super easy by color coding the wires and the wiring harness, so it's easy to put back together. Then screw the rear panel in place with one inch long wood screws. I recommend drilling pilot holes in the rear panel before screwing it in place. This will help avoid any potential splitting. Well, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you found this helpful. As always, we want to see what you're building. So tag us on social media, show us what you're working on. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter for free plans, promotions, upcoming product launches, and all sorts of videos and fun stuff. We just got fun stuff every month. Hope you have fun building this. Thanks for watching.